Hello there, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to uh, the first book of Chronicles. And we have two books of Chronicles that we're going to go through. Um, and, and, you know, the Chronicles are um, said to be uh, what is left over after uh, Samuel and Kings. They're actually made to be a, 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 from what what history tells us they're made to be a supplement to, to uh, Samuel, the book of Samuel and the, and the um, books of Kings. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, dive into first book of Chronicles and then, then into the second book of Chronicles. And the first book of Chronicles does a lot of, of uh, genealogy and stuff like that. And, you know, at times it can get boring. Me, myself, I, I tend to fall asleep when I read boring stuff. So so I'm trying to keep awake here. But, you know, the book of Chronicles actually is is uh, said to mean the matter of days. So it is, it, it's... It's, a, it's a, another historical book uh, written between 450 and 425 BC. I want to read um, a little bit to you from my uh, uh, one of my Bible study guides. This is what the Bible is all about. It says, Chronicles is a summary of Hebrew history that duplicates much of the books of Samuel and, and of Kings, but it focuses more on the spiritual deeds and misdeeds of the kings and on the importance of worshiping the Lord properly through the ministry of the priests in the temple. Through this nation, meaning meaning the Jewish nation, our Lord came to earth. God chose this people for the fulfillment of his great promises and purposes. He is still their God, and his purposes are still to be fulfilled in them. In the light of this truth, books such as Chronicles take on new meaning and new power. Now, you know, as we're reading this, you know, we get to see some of the history. Sorry about that. Some of the history of uh, um, the Jewish nation, and and remember, God's promises. There, there are still promises. There's still prophecy yet to be fulfilled. So, you know, as we're reading, going through this, and and you know, please keep your excitement on some of this, and and because it is good, exciting stuff. And so, um, after reading today, I, I made a few little notes that I, that I want to go through. Just a couple observations that I made over over you know some of these people that are in the genealogy of Christ. And, and that's, that's probably the route that I'm going to take over these next few chapters as we're studying the genealogy, just talking about some of the different people. Um, you know, um, for instance, you know, we know some of these names. We know uh, Noah. We know Adam. We know uh, um, oh, Methuselah, Enoch. You know, we know some of these people. So, so you know, we've read about them before. You know, when you read in uh, uh, Genesis and stuff like that. So, I'm just going to give you a couple tidbits on on some of them. Like, uh, Methuselah. Methuselah was the son of Enoch. And he was the, the single person to live longest on the earth. He lived for 969 years. Yet he died before his father. How is that possible? Methuselah was lived longer on the earth than anybody else for 969 years and died before his father. How is that possible? That's just a little riddle, like little 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 riddle joke that I used to use with the teenagers. And the truth is, Enoch never died. Enoch, uh, along with Elijah, uh, was carried up in a chariot of fire. Never died. So, so that's how is that? Um, you take Noah. Oh, you know, Noah had a few few children in here. Um, but I want to take a look at a couple of his grandsons. I'm sorry, great grandsons, actually. A couple of his great grandsons is Caslahim, Kaz and I'm probably going to butcher it, but Caslahim and Nimrod. And both of those are important. These are the great grandsons of Noah. This is after the flood, after the earth has already been flooded. Caslahim is actually where the Philistines come from. The Philistines come from descendants of Noah. Nimrod. Nimrod was was he was a strong, powerful guy. His his name actually partially mean, means a uh, great hunter and stuff like that. But Nimrod was responsible for building cities and stuff like that. He began. Uh, uh, he became very mighty, mighty, mighty man on the earth, and uh, you know he was uh, uh, responsible for building Nineveh creating Nineveh. He was responsible for the Tower of Babel. Now, you know, we, we, we believe that the Tower of Babel is is that the people were trying to get to God. Uh, but Josephus, who was a historian from back then, actually suggests that N uh, Nimrod, as he was building the Tower of Babel, Nimrod was upset that God flooded the earth the first time, and he said, God will not flood this earth again. And he tried to build a structure tall enough that God couldn't flood. And 
you know, as Josephus says, God's anger came down and and uh, disrupted the language of the people so that they, they couldn't finish the project. Um, you know, and I, I just thought that that was a little bit cool. And uh, Nimrod, there's also his, there's also a, a, a folklore that says Nimrod's mother is the one responsible for Christmas. In that, uh, when Nimrod died, she said that he would come back and leave gifts once a year underneath the the pine trees or whatever they were, and and that is how pagan Christmas was born and stuff like that so so just you know as, as we're going through these these next things these, these next few chapters and you're just seeing all these names pick a couple names and, and, and research them and look into them and and you know you'd be amazed that there is some really cool information in here there really is about some of these people that we can we we can learn a lot from them so hey I hope you have a super day I love you all